Well, welcome everyone to the Dave Mason Garb first annual annual Memorial Boys Elementary Tournament, formerly the Trinity Tigers basketball tournament for many, many years. Uh, Tom, I think that was started in 76, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Um, Dave did a great job, and uh, it was great that uh, you and Ryan put this back together because I think it's a great thing for all the kids. Well, I've been thinking about it for some time now, and it just look at the kids out here, the smiles on their faces. Uh, and besides just the, the basketball play, they're learning at a young age. The also acceptance of fair play, sportsmanship is huge, politeness to the officials, to the fans. I mean, that's, you're striving to get these kids on the right track right off the bat, and we've had a good reception of uh, people show out through the weekend. We started Friday night here at Catholic Central. Uh, yesterday, Saturday, for quite some time, it was a lengthy day, 9 to 6. And then today, uh, our championship games uh, here this afternoon, and today's uh, last game will be between Scottville, the visiting Spartans, and also... Frankfurt Panthers, who came down out of Frankfurt, who's had to go through the losers bracket, Tom, to get here now. Oh wow! I didn't realize that. I, I this is the first uh, game that I'll see, but I've ridden by the uh, place several times over the last uh, this past weekend, and uh, the amount of cars and the uh, it looked like a varsity game going on or a varsity tournament. So there's obviously been a lot of interest, and it's great that this is uh, going again. You know, um, and two, we have some time here. You know, because uh, we're going to give Frankfurt a little time to. Relax. The game isn't scheduled to be till three, but I think they're going to give them an extra six, seven minutes. But again, to thank some of the people that made this happen. Today's broadcast, I actually thank Barry Lynn, uh, Orchard Beach Aviation, Manistee Airport. He 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 stepped forward to help us out and to try to get this. this is our first ever live live stream. Where years ago, you and I used to do play-by-play -play and color for the high school varsity teams, but that was always delayed because it it sanctions through the MHSAA. Uh, the the fifth grade and fourth grade aren't affected by that. So we're going to try our first live stream ever. Hopefully we don't make any mistakes like we used to. And, uh, you know, give these kids something. We hope we get one recorded for them so we can send one to each winning coach. Each coach is a winner in my book because of they got here. That's right. Um, you want to talk about some of the sponsors or you want me to? Go ahead. Uh, sponsors, um, we'd like to thank some of the sponsors of, of this uh, of this tournament. Chapo's Northside Bar in Manistee, Smith & Eddie Insurance, Swidorsky Brothers Excavating, Seng Marina, Boyer Agency, Big Al's Pizza, Sports Inc., Lucky Lizard Award and Gifts, and the Jake Sacconi Memorial Golf Tournament, and Stu's Pub. Um, Big Al's has been around. I mean, I remember Big Al's when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, in fact, their, their boys played in this tournament also. In fact, Eric Ware, that just finished up uh, getting the third place trophy with the Bear Lake Lakers, he was in this. Uh, when he was younger, and also Bill Sturgeon, out of, he was in Mason County Eastern at the time. He's coaching here with Ryan Kieszkowski on our third and fourth and fifth grade level, and he brought his 1991 commemorative shirt, and his son was wearing it for warm-ups. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I did see a couple of uh, uh, 2003s, 2004s that some of the parents said, hey, I wanted you to see this. And I mean, Dave did a, a big thing for a lot of years when he started this and you know let's we can clear something else up too tom because it, i've had some calls you know from other schools not just one or two other schools wondering are we going to put a sixth grade in because uh, originally it was a fifth and six and the reason we went to the, the well the third fourth combo if you wanted to use third grade is to help your fourth grade out and also if you have fourth to make your fifth grade work the reason for that combo is because they've started as a class d type setting because Trinity you know again was the same size as some of these other schools small and we're looking at trying to keep that going but with the sixth grade in some of the smaller schools now I think Catholic Central is one of them your sixth grade is now considered middle school and middle school now plays 12 games of referees and clocks and that's part of the MHSAA so we can't use them in a legal spot to play in this tournament but we did talk to some people down at the MHSAA and there's some things we can look at to hopefully get that up and running again, but stay in the legality lines of what's needed for the state. Well, that's great. Just just the fact that people are interested in adding a sixth grade uh, means a lot and uh, means that this tournament will probably grow. So. Uh, yeah, again, uh, we're broadcasting on the television live right now on channel 189 and 190. So this is a big thing for the kids, and if you're at home and you're flipping through the dials, uh, this is what this is about. And 
another another thing that was brought up, you know, during trying to get this together. You know, when I first started, Tom, I went and talked to Pastor Ron and and Mary, and say we, you know, we we we'd like to get this back off the ground for us and the schools. And Trinity does have a couple of boys that they co-op with us because you know they're smaller classes, and they're also. You know, we're, we're looking to hope that they get bigger so someday they can get it back. But right now, if they can combine with us, all the kids win, and that's what it's about. Yeah, this is just great. It's great to see. And I give you a lot of credit. I know you've been just got done uh, up with a long season with the girls, and then you turn around and do this. Uh, it says a lot about uh, your dedication to the to well, sport. Well, years and years ago, I coached junior high boys. Um, with Paul Swidorski, and actually Dave Peterson first, and Paul Swidorski. You know, I, I still love coming in to watch the boys play, the young girls play, and I'm, it's just going to go, we need to bring this back to the community and the surrounding areas. And In fact, the Frankfurt coach, I believe he played in it. Um, Custer coach might have played in it. So it's it's a good thing, and it, 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 to me it's just about kids and making the kids grow and get them off the computers and off the laptops and the phones yep. and get them playing. Well, we're about two minutes away from the game. Maybe I can give you a... Uh or announce the rosters for today's game. Um, I don't know what the starting lineups are. Those will be announced, but I will give you uh, the rosters of each team. First for the Scottville fifth grade team, coached by Chris Vandenhag. Um, Cole Vandenhag, number 35. Caden Reese, number 5. Number 37, Graydon Etchinson. Number 41, Tyler Norton. Number 38, Zach Graham. Number 45, Caleb Bennett. Number 4, Kyle Peters, number 34, Zach Molina, number two, Nate Wild, number 36, Caden Rumer, or Rummer, hopefully I spell, pronounced that right, and number 56, Cody, or Brody Clems. For the Frankfurt fifth grade team, coached by Troy Liu, um, we have number 23, Ryan Lewis, number 13, Owen Mills, number 11, Cash Rosum. Number 24, Eli Latart. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Number 41, Colton, Colton Bates. Number 31, Aiden Evans. And number 33, Caden Krause. And our, our good thanks to Kaylin Johnson helping us get some of this paperwork together. And she must have been between keeping the book and writing it out. Uh, the head coach for Frankfurt is Troy Lewis. She forgot a couple letters oh, there. Oh, Lewis. Us, Tom. Okay. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll talk about him again. So well, we want to make sure says, we fill in the no, blanks. Uh, she, yeah, it actually says in the program, <laughs> Lewis. Okay, <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> again, folks, it's been uh, it's got to be pushing 20 years plus that Tom and I got to be together and do this, and we're just glad we can do it, and we hope to do it for years to come. And uh, possibly next year we'll get into back some, some varsity games if we can get Barry on track with us, do a couple of Manistee High and a couple of Manistee Catholic boys and girls, and it, it – it's something that community needs, and they like it. Your wife's taking pictures of us. I yeah. mean, we're, we're pretty famous. Oh, uh, yeah. You know. We range right up there. <laughs> you know, And also, too, you know, because I know it was mentioned by Gary Mikowski, we do have some gentlemen here today representing who sponsored that trophy. And we'll talk about that a little later in the program. Okay, we'll listen to the announcers now as they announce the uh, starting lineups and...
Yeah, I remember Dave Mason guy very well from my days back in school, and I'm almost 60 years old, and I can still remember him. And, and uh, um, he did a lot for the community. Okay, the starting of lineups were just announced uh, for both Scottville and Frankfurt, and we're about ready to get underway. Mr. Dave Nemesek and uh, young Mr. O'Hagan are our referees for today's game. Uh, I noticed they've been here for the previous games, and I noticed Dave on TV yesterday during the news, so he must have done quite a few games for this tournament. And we're ready to go. Tom, right off the tip is what's happened earlier in the day. Frankfurt does a good job with it. And, and again, 31, Aiden Evans, one of the taller kids on that Frankfurt program, he, he had to put back after the missed shot. Uh, Frankfurt, again, just coming off a little break to go through this loser's bracket. Um, nice little hesitation move there, Tom, by 35, Cole Vanderhag. Again, again folks. No, two, quick, a, two quick scores. And they're, they're fun to watch. These, these two kids, uh, excuse me, two teams have played well throughout this thing. And also we should mention uh, the officials for tonight, Tom. Yeah, I already mentioned uh, uh, Dave Nemesek. Uh, looks like he's done quite a few games. And young Mr. Uh, O'Hagan, Jaden O'Hagan. I couldn't think of his first name. And his father did the finals with Dave back when we broadcast that from the Army years ago. Yeah, probably. <laughs> And his dad's been a long time rep for many, many, many years. Long. It is a long shot for a young kid. Um, I think Frankfurt, maybe they'll be a little patient. This young man right here, he, he can get out and motor for Frankfurt. Owen Mills, he, he's a spark plug for him. Good ball movement. You know, they're a patient team. That's the, the coach did a good job with them. You can see some of the... But they all like to go to that corner for that Happy Meal, I think. I've never understood that with young kids. I mean, even there, a good job of pivoting at their age and being right. patient with the ball. Well, I'm sure you, as a coach, you like to see all the fundamentals at this, at this age. Well, and that's, that's what helps, too. When you Makes get your to... job easier later. <laughs> there we go. Now we're getting it hanged on. But also for the game, you have two quality officials. They, the game goes smoother. You, you call to have the kids learn, but let them play a little bit. Yeah, we should probably mention that we're playing two 15-minute halves, running clock. I believe the clock runs. Uh, Put back by Kyle Peters, and plus he was fouled, so 4-2, to two, Scott Bills ahead. As I was mentioning, the running clock, and I think inside of two minutes it stops unless there's a 10-point lead or more. Is that 10-point lead or less? Or less. It'll yes. stop. <laughs> well, he, he connects on the, the free throw and gives us a 5-2. Well, with 12-25, so the clocks do run fast. Uh, the coaches are allowed one timeout per half and one floater to be used at, at their discretion. Nice pass. And good defense. Yeah, Lewis had a good move underneath. He just couldn't come up with the shot. <laughs> and a big board from Frankfurt, number 24, Eli Letart. I'm guessing there's no pressing allowed in this, at this age? It, no, pass, no pressing, and it's half-court pickup, man only, no zone. Um, it, it does teach the kids early. Nice steal there. By Vanderhag. Get 
Caden Rumor. And them again, you can see the patience on their team. When they didn't have the shot, they kicked it back out and worked it. And it, it showed yeah, them. that's what you like to see. Um, some kids that aren't playing for themselves, that they're trying to play as a team. There's that's Vander great Hague. to know right early. Not quite understanding why he got called for that, but if you attempt to get up after you're on the floor with it, it's an automatic travel. If you stay on the floor on your bottom side, as long as you kick it out, you're not going to get in trouble. Oh, they're getting... Your hand slapping at half court, Tom. <laughs> His kids are into it. <laughs> That's Aiden Evans handling the ball quite a bit for one of the taller kids. Man, he's a, he's he's a big boy. Range. Shot was blocked by Peters. And then committing a foul. Just a lot of excitement here, Tom, this going on. It, it's, it's, it's fun to have it back. Well, I'm sure, especially uh, during uh, Final Four week in college basketball, all these kids are all fired up to play. It's kind of like when I watch the Masters, I can't wait to go out and play golf. <laughs> Nice take, I believe, by Ryan Lewis. Check the foul. Number five, Caden Reese for the Spartans, committing the foul. We'll get a two-shot count here. And then two in that third and fourth grade, the, you know, the four teams we had in that, the officials did such a good job of making sure the kids were in the right placement at the free throw area. Um, some of the kids didn't understand some of the blocks and then the small blocks. They did just a great job spacing, mm -hmm. teaching the kids. Now well, Scottfield just made a uh, wholesale change, all five players. You're right, Tom, wholesale change, and now who's taking the ball out and who's bringing it up? It just happened, but... <laughs> It's uh, we're back 30. in action. I believe that's a 38. Graydon, Graydon Etchinson and uh, Zach Graham. <laughs> Big shot there by the Spartans. Score now nine to two, and we got a 60 second timeout. Nate Wild. Put that last basket in to put the Spartans up nine to two. Again, uh, sports announcer Gary Makowski acknowledging the five guys that really, or five businesses that really put up um, some a, a nice donation to make these two trophies happen. The third and fourth. Got a nice pedestal with a big basketball on it. And if Barry gets a shot at the end of the game, possibly we'll see the one that's on for the uh, fifth grade team. It's probably about 18 to 22 inches tall. Big, huge basketball. And that'll become a traveling trophy, Tom. So each school will have their name etched in it, keep it at their place, and bring it back the following year. That's a great idea. And, it, you know, you get, you know, you get to hold it in your trophy case for a year and uh, have bragging rights for a, for a complete <laughs> year and hopefully win it back again next year. And they also will get a trophy to take home for their trophy case. All first, second, and third will get that. Plus, um, players' medals that they participated in, you know, in a bronze, silver, or gold category, depending on where they placed. Rosa, he's being patient in that corner. They still keep going back to him. <laughs> now hits Aiden, Aiden Evans. And again, they like that corner. Very competitive corner over there, Tom. At least we're finally going to get out of it. We got to travel. I went to the ball game. We do have number 36, Caden Rumor. Number 37, Graydon Etchinson. See if we can pick up on a few more numbers here. 45, Caleb Barnett, Bennett. And we also number have a 41. Who's that? Tom? Tyler Norton. And um, number, number two. two, Nate Wild. 
who's already put some points on the board. Rolls him just he makes he makes a good dive, but he just can't get it off. Scott Phil's playing some uh, good defense. Oh, good job. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Not happy, Mr. A little Nemesis temper on that official. one and a technical foul called on number thirty eight. Um, Zach Graham. Yeah, he kind of. I guess this is the way you learn. <laughs> it is. He kind of ran over Cash Rolsum, and uh, he slammed the ball down right in front of uh, Mr. Nemesek, which you know you got to learn. It was correct. It was a it was a charge, and you know again the, the kids get hyped up. It's a big game for him, and he just lost a little composure. I think. Well, he'll learn from that. More than likely, he won't uh, do that again for many years. <laughs> no, I'm sure he won't. So at the line is Lewis, Ry Rylan Lewis, and he does connect on his first. And the second off the glass. Took them both off the glass. So currently 9-4. to four. Uh, We'll try to show you the... Have Barry take a shot of the scoreboard at the end of each half and at the end of the game so folks at home can see it now and then. And because of the technical foul, Frankfurt will inbound the ball. Again, right to Rosen. He, he does a nice job of handling it. And again, in the, into the corner goes Leotard. Oh, nice move. And a very nice move off the glass. That was Eli Lightheart. Now, Tom, there's a, a young man that just got teed up, Zach Graham, and comes down and hits a three. So I think he's getting it out of his system. You know, he, he's here to play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now 12-6. Leitart uh, just loses the handle a little bit. Frankfurt does tend to spend a lot of time on the right side of the, uh, the court. I haven't seen much on the left side of the court at all. Aiden Evans going out, and the new young man that checked in. We have multiple, uh, looks like 33, Caden Kraus for Frankfurt. Oh, slid that foot. You know, and I, I know to get here, you know, different officiating, you know, different crews, different people, but I like the way they're calling it. They're calling it the way the game should be called. And, you know, the, the, it's a big teaching point, especially in a pressure game for the kids to be on their game and do the right thing. Oh, absolutely. If you let too much go, then, you know, they're not learning. And I've seen some solid picks for opening up their teammates on both sides of the floor already. Yeah. And I'm impressed with Scottville's defense. They are not making it easy for Frankfurt at all. And, you know, uh, talking to uh, the Scottville coach, Chris Vanderhagen, before the game earlier today, they had... 25 kids sign up for for basketball, fifth grade. And they split those kids up. And they make it an even team. They don't load one or the other, and, and that's the way it should be done. The more kids you get playing, Tom, right. at any level, the more kids you're going to have come up and get better during their high school right. years. Wow, three offensive rebounds, four offensive rebounds, and a fall. <laughs> Rumor battling underneath, and then... We had a fall on Eli Letart, number 24 for Frankfurt, on our bounds underneath for Scottville. Again, Tom, you're right. They're eating him up. 56 doing yep. a good job underneath yep. there. Clems, Three. Brady Clems. I'm not keeping track of rebounds, but he's uh, he's had four or five just in the last uh, 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, that next group's playing well for him. And again, I think uh, our number 38, Zach Graham, He's not scared to put the ball up. Nope. He does get caught there for his second foul, so maybe we see a coaching change from Coach Vanderhag. Uh, in for Scottville, number 34, um, Zach Molina, and number and for Frankfurt, number 13, Owen Mills. It's, Tom, it's even fun to see what kind of out-of-bounds stuff they're going to run, you know, at, at that young age. Power nice. Move. Power move, yes, sir, by Eli Leotard, number 24 for Frankfurt. It looks on this group that Graham will handle most of the dribbling duties. He's not shy. Nice <laughs> shot, too. Very nice shot. Just missing. Yeah, 
they, uh, they, they, they are patient. Wow, right to the hoop. That was Rylan Lewis with that basket. It's it's a nice, clean game so far. I'm, I'm enjoying this a lot. I, I hope the people that have a chance to tune in are. Again, I mean, some good, strong rebounding, some clean, decent shots. We haven't seen anything catastrophically taken at the wrong time. Yeah, good defensive rebound that time by Eli Lightheart. Lightheart. You're right. You're right, Tom. Look at Scott Wheeler. I mean, they're 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 meeting you in your face, and yeah, they have a lot of they're, Nate Wild got take for a foul, but you know they're not backing down. They're they're trying to get right up into it. Must have been watching Texas Tech last night. Yeah, Texas Tech and Michigan <laughs> State. They, Texas Tech, strong defensive team. That's Rosen. Him and Lewis seem to play a lot together. Lee Tart, Rosen gets the ball back. Oh, nice pass. Beautiful. Somehow he ended up with it. Leotard, he was kind of asking for the foul when he was sitting on the ground. He didn't get it. We're going to come back with the Spartans bringing the ball front court. Number five. Nice drive for that young guy. We haven't called his name too much. Caden Reese. Foul was on Owen Mills. This looks like a high out of bounds set, Tom, for underneath the basket. A little small diamond. <laughs> nice, nice move. Fake. <laughs> oh, beautiful. From number 37, Etchinson. Tom, did that get blocked? It looked like it did, but uh, I don't know. Went off the backboard and in. Uh, uh, the officials letting some of the players know that the top bottom and sides are in play. It's the bars that hold the, the basket up that become out of play. That was a heck of a shot at 14-10 now the score. Scottville up by four. Evans again doing some ball handling for him and Leotard. They sure like to pound that side but I'm sure we'll change some up. Aiden Evans. A step back. Nice move. Rebound by Owen Mills. Tied up. It'll go over to Spartans. A lot of good offensive rebounding by both teams. So tied up for the jump. Next possession will go back to Frankfurt. This one belongs to the Spartans. You know, Spartans, Spartans showed him, uh, you know, they got 10 young men at this contest. Just out of the reach of number 45, Caleb Bennett's. And Frankfurt coming through that loser's bracket with seven kids. So I imagine they're in very good shape or they're an awful tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many games would that be? Um, today they just played two back-to-back, -back, I believe. Oh, nice pass ahead. But over the course of the weekend oh. coming through the loser's bracket must be, what, four yeah, or five there games? There was a lot of least? games yesterday. Yeah, there really was. not all good, all fun to watch. Etchison just losing the handle on that. Then he dove at the end to try to help it, but he just couldn't get a handle on it. Leotard again. He he likes to start high on that, that side. And Reese comes down with it. Oh, nice oh, pass if they connect. Oh. Number 37 there underneath for the Scottville Spartans was Gordon Graydon Etchison. He had a great look. He just couldn't get it to connect. 3.9 seconds left, so I think we're going to have a quick one here. <laughs> it should be interesting, Tom, how they're setting up. So it's going to be a three. Oh, almost hit it. <laughs> well, that first stands is ending. 14-10. Uh, not a bad first half. No, score after the end of the first half is uh, Scottville... 14 and Frankfurt 10. Well, I think we probably have air time unless Barry gives us a commercial break somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's nodding. That isn't in the program today. So we're going to continue to. <laughs> we got to fill four minutes or five minutes here. 
Well, well, we can again. It's nice all the people that showed up to help. The varsity coaches here for the boys. Uh, in fact, both uh, the uh, Zach Bialik and, of course, uh, Nick Fortier. They played here at Catholic Central and played under Coach uh, Mike Felichuk. And Coach Smalings here for the girls. Phil Johnson, uh, Mike uh, Scotchless. Actually, he retired. The last girls home game here was his last official varsity game he was going to do and he was he's been on that thing well i asked him to do it when i was in jv so he's been on it you know 30 years plus and he, i asked him if he'd come back and do it for the little guys and he said sure so him and him and scott been uh swapping time on the timer and gary mikowski uh, exo actually a graduate of Manchester catholic central too came back to do some home announcing along with pastor ron from trinity trinity lutheran church so it uh yeah. It's just nice to see the volunteerism that you get. I know the girls basketball team, my kids, I've had several members here doing whatever Ryan Kieszkowski needed. Um, again, whatever needed to be done. And Ryan also had some other people that was involved with the uh, concessions and also the gate. You know, it's they don't get to see the game, but they're at the gate and they don't mind switching off. And Tina and Joe Fisk also came over from Trinity and helped out. It was nice to see them, and they were happy to be here. And I didn't, you know, I didn't even call them. I ran into her in the office. She goes, Todd, wherever you need, Joe and I are going to be there." So she's filled in some voids, and uh, it's it's just a nice, a nice gathering of people to help make this come off. Well, things run smooth when you have a lot of volunteers, and uh, you see a lot of familiar faces here, but you also see a lot of new faces and a lot of young people that uh, are starting to take over for some of the. Uh, the older folks that have been doing it for years, and that's kind of nice to see when you see Nick Fortier and and uh, Zach Bialik and some of those guys all here um, for trying to assist. Um, as we mentioned, uh, Scottville leads 14 to 10 at halftime. I can give you a few statistics here. Uh, leading uh, pretty balanced scoring for Scottville. Uh, leading the scoring with one three-point shot is uh, Zach Graham with three points. Uh, Cole Vanderhag has two. Graydon Etchinson, two. Zach Molina, two. Nate Wild, two. And Caden Rumor, two. And one free throw by Kyle Peters. The uh, Frankfurt Panthers are led in scoring by, well, they actually have uh, two people leading the scoring. Eli Lightheart has two field goals, and Ryan Lewis has a field goal and two, two free throws. And Aiden Evans also has a field goal. Not keeping track of uh, the number of fouls, but there were not a ton of fouls called in the in the first half. So I don't think the either team probably has anybody in foul trouble. No, in fact, that last game was one of the few games that we got to the one on one situation. And talking about some of that in games, uh, Mike Scott just did the clock the first three, and Scott got on for the second two. Of course, the first one Scott does, we go to overtime. And he's going, really, I get the overtime games? And uh, that game was won by one point. And then yesterday we also had another one that went to overtime, a nail-biter for both both schools. And the fans, I mean, today, was, of course, when you get down to just two teams left, a lot of people don't stick around. But we've had a, a nice show of people here. Most of the people are sat on the side we're commentating from, not on the team side. Uh, which was good. They could cheer for their kids from this side. But, folks, we, we had a lot of people in here yesterday, especially in, in some today. You know, it's, it's thinned out, but they've got good support from the Frankfurt fans and the uh, Mason County Central fans. Well, Aiden Evans right off the bat gets tied up, and Frankfurt had the ball, and now will turned over with the jump ball situation going over to the Spartans of Scottville. And let's see, number five is Reese, 35 into the game is Vander Hague. I believe that's Chris's son. 36 would be Kyle, excuse me, Caden Rumor. Number four, Kyle Peters. And the last one is 41. And his, that young man's name is Tyler Norton. In for Frankfurt, number 31. Aiden Evans, number 11, Cash Rosam, number 23, Ryan Lewis. 24, 24. Number 24, Eli Lightheart, and number 13, Owen Mills. And right, Tom, just in that short span, it's going back and forth. What a nice pass underneath, and Caden uh, Reese just coming up short, but what a great pass there. 
from his teammate, number 35. And I like assists. I'm an assist guy. Cole Vanderhey gave him a nice, and he got fouled going up, but we got two shots for him. I wasn't sure, Tom, who fouled. Two shots for Eli Lightheart. Oh, excuse me, my fault. Tom, I showed you the wrong paper. The second foul was on Eli Lightheart. Oh, you're right. Caden what? Reese is at the line. He missed the first one. He's ready to shoot the second. You know, this ship's going to have some bumpy waters. It's been a long time since we got to do this. Well, you have a new appreciation for how good uh, people that announce games are <laughs> <laughs> when you try to do this after with no practice whatsoever. We're, we're not quite up to the George Cal Ernie Harwell yet, but we're working yet. on it. Because <laughs> you got to love those Tigers. Look at Caden Reese. And he just pickpocketing there. And he a pretty good little ball handler. Yes, nice job, and what they called there is they got the ball back defensively on this side of half, and they have to get back to half court, so they're just going to reset. Again, Vanderhaeg uh, doing the point duties right now for the first stanza, the, the first part of the second stanza. No changes of score. <laughs> A misplaced pass, and Vanderhaeg ended up with it and then got fouled. <laughs> Aiden Evans with the foul for Frankfurt. Number 35, Cole Vanderhaeg will go to the line and shoot two, I believe. Young man's got good form, and again, he's the, we've had some good rebounding on both ends of the floor today. Yeah, we have. We were watching that earlier. A lot of the teams, the kids don't realize you're standing behind a three-point arc. You can't run in until that ball hits the rim if you're behind a three-point arc. Those inside can, but you can't. Well, Linehart again driving hard at that corner. but Foul called on number 41, Tyler Norton. Again, Tom, still 14-10. Scottville on top, no score yet from either team in the second half. We had some opportunities, nothing fell. 13 is Owen Mills. Aiden Evans is 31. And a three second oh, violation. Three seconds. So. Don't see that called very much anymore, but I'm sure in elementary that's uh, <laughs> it's probably a little more prevalent. Well, I noticed too, because I sat down in the corners to uh, help keep the traffic from going underneath the basket and so forth. The amount of talking that uh, these officials do to the boys that, hey, get it out of the lane, guys move through, don't, you know, watch your hand checks. They did a lot of, basically they did a lot of coaching for the coaches and just getting the rules right. It was a nice job. Well, when you have a, when you have a referee as experienced as Dave Nemesek, who's been doing it about 40 years, um, he's and, really going to be good with kids this age. And you're teaching. right. Uh, they had a boys game here at Catholic Central this year. And he did have his, this is his 40th yeah. year, which was acknowledged that all the fans that were here from both schools. And then, of course, us here, we do whatever we can. He's been a pretty good mentor to me uh, with umpiring also. He's, he's a pretty knowledgeable guy. Between him and Bob Halliard in town, I'm, I'm pretty grateful. A little question on if the arrow was right. We had a jump ball situation, Tom. Uh, good job by Kate. Jay O'Hagan and also Dave Nemesek. They went to the scores table. They got it right, and we're moving on. Mills handling the front court duties now for Frankfurt. Nice take by Vanderhagen. And somehow, Tom, how'd that get through? Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> Reese had a great the opportunity. <laughs> missed the shot, and then another one. You missed the rebound. <laughs> Checking in, number 38, Zach Graham, who we we seen hit a big outside shot in that first half. In for the uh, Frankfurt Panthers, number 13, I believe. No, number 41, uh, Colton Bates. Young man getting some time, good to see. I mean, both coaches, of course, Frankfurt. And I believe number four for the Spartans just came in, uh, Kyle Peters. Didn't see him out there. I might be mistaken, but. No, I think you're right. Nice clean pick by 36 for, for the Spartans. That'd be Kate Hayden Ruhr. Rumor, Rummer, and Aiden Evans with a big board. 
It was Caden Rummer, Rummer that uh, had that nice pick. But now we're coming the other way with uh, coach's son, Ryland Lewis, handling the point duties too. Ball called on Caleb Bennett's of Scottville. I'm sorry, Kyle Peters, not Caleb Bennett's. And we did have a new reserve come in, too. Number two, Tom, for Scottville. Who's that? Uh, number two for Scottville, that is Nate Wild. I mean, oh, great move. Light. Leadhart, number 24, Eli Leadhart for Frankfurt. And you know what I've noticed, Tom? They're doing a nice job of setting a high outside pick and then rolling. That set a lot of things up for me. Most schools seem to be doing that. Oh, might have got a little push off there by Cash Rosen, but he ended up with the ball. And again, Aiden Evans still out on top. And then to, I believe it's the coach's son, Ryland Lewis. Kind of hard to see some of these uniforms. So they don't have any numbers on the front. So sometimes there's Zach Graham again making a big play. I think he kind of lost his footing. No call. We're just going to come back the other way. We got a sub coming in now too, Tom. And for uh, Scottville, number 37, Braden Etchinson. Got some pretty unique numbers you don't get to see at the varsity level. Yeah, here on some of these young men. We had some. We had some uh, 70s series on one of the teams yesterday we were kind of chuckling <laughs> about. Uh, that foul was called on number 23, Ryan Lewis of Frankfurt. Yeah, he just didn't quite set the pick solid. He moved into him, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to learn how to set a good pick. And at this age, with the jobs they've been doing, it's going real well. Yeah. What I'm impressed with, and uh, a lot of times you don't see it, is we're not seeing a lot of three-point shots, which I'm really happy about because it seems like that's all kids practice nowadays is three-point shots. It is. It's kind of nice to see them going and trying to get the ball inside. It is. I think uh, number two, Nate Wild, got called for that one. Possibly not. It was. No, Tom, we were talking about that yesterday on, on the games. You see all these kids before the game warming up by the arc. But during the game, they're all shooting inside the red paint. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> You even maybe, see that in varsity competition. Yeah. Nice move there by Ro Cash rolls him. And a nice rebound by Kyle Peters. Nice job. I know the young man's right-handed, but you know he took the ball up left-handed. For me as a coach, I tell my girls, just do the right things. Eventually, you'll get it down pat. And he did a nice job with it. Ryland Lewis again, and then is Cash rolls him, part of the guard duo here that's working that right side of the floor. And big board, Tom, by Peters. I'll tell you what, we've only had two points scored in this entire half. Vanderhag, I think it was blocked, but your kid that's been rebounded strong, Tom. Number four, Kyle Peters. 16-12 now, Spartans yeah. on top. Each team has scored two points in we the second half. Just over five minutes left in this contest. And that, that's it. Into the game for the Spartans, number 36, uh, Caden Rumor, and number five, Caden Reese. That last foul was on number 33, Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. I lost. I was watching that young man again. Peters, I mean, misses the shot, gets nice. it back, puts it back up. Peters doing his job on the glass. Nice young job. We're going to get a timeout here. Timeout Frankfurt, I believe. That's probably our biggest lead of the, the whole game so far, 18-12 currently. And Frankfurt with 14 fouls and the Spartans with three. There's uh, two or three coaches on both squads that help out. And, you know, it's nice to see you get you can get a lot more covered if you got a lot more people helping you with it, especially that fundamental stuff. Oh, yeah, and you have different different coaches that know different things, and uh, some know basketball better than others, and it's kind of nice. 
And uh, a lot of times it's parents. Sometimes it's... Well, how often do you see now, do you, do you see parents out in that driveway shooting baskets with their kids, boys or girls, or, you know, throwing a football, playing cut soft with a baseball, softball? You know, I know some parents, like Zach, he grew up with a golf club in his hand. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, 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 he's a great golfer. And because the parents got outside with him. You know, it wasn't the TV stuff. And I know Ryan Kieszkowski, he's got uh, uh, three triplet boys here, and they'll be coming up in the in the basketball family. And, you know, Ryan was big into hockey. He was part of the West Shore Hockey coaching staff at one time. And his boys are growing up now, and he's going to make sure he's got a daughter, Annabelle, that's in fourth or fifth grade, and she, she played basketball in the system this year at Manistee Catholic. Look at that little guy. He's calling out what he wants with the can signals. That's Owen Mills for Frankfurt. And I got a big kick out of that. It's like they spread it out. Aiden Evans, yeah. That's Rolsen. Oh, nice kick out to Leithart. And again, Mills, nice rebound. Nice steal by number four, Kyle Peters. And somebody just got teed up. I think it might have been the coach. And so we're going to get. Oh, oh. And I think the and coach, the coach is just have got to have thrown out of the game. Um, official Mr. Nemesek didn't like the uh, what was being said from the bench, and he didn't get off him. And it, he then said, "You're going to have to leave the ball game, sir, and the gymnasium, for what has happened." Um, again, you're trying to teach the kids like we've been talking about the right things, and he did, he, he did get a little upset, you know. The, the call, Tom, it was like a block shot and a steal all at the same time, and I think he, he thought his young man got fouled. Well, number 35, Cole Vanderhag is at the line shooting the, uh, the technical foul shots, and he's missed the first two, but he's got one more. And he hits it. And I, and I don't have the full coaching staff's name. I mean, there's there's two other guys that have been here the whole tournament helping out. And uh, so they'll do a good job. They know the boys. You know, well, he made two out of four. He actually had four shots. You know, in a big game like this, that's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, it is. Increased the score to 20 to 12 with 4.09 left. You know, I hope it doesn't come down to those two points at the end because everybody feels bad. Uh, you know, that... We gave up those extra attempts. So, you know, back to the game. And Scottville now with the ball in the front court. And, of course, Coach's son, Vanderhaeg, does a lot of the ball handling. And a three-second call, as we were talking about earlier on your man, Kyle Peters. He was nailed with the three seconds. Into the game for Scottville, number 56, Brody Clems, and number 45, Caleb Bennett's. And Owen Mills handling the ball up front with uh, Rylan Lewis. And Aiden Evans taking a look for Lanehart down below. They, there they go. Now they find him. You're right, Tom. That defense from Scottville, they, yeah, they're, they're pretty relentless. They're not making anything easy for Frankfurt. I think that's what's frustrated uh, some of the coaches for Frankfurt. Well, and I, I think... Uh, Coach Lewis's son got a little heated there, too. I'm sure he's upset his dad, you know, isn't on the bench side with him right now. But, you know, he's got to play through it, and he'll learn to. And again, Vanderhey running the outside sets. And Aiden Evans with a little step in front for a steal. And, and Owens, good job of hanging on to nice himself job. and staying up. And Leadhart seems to be his favorite player to go to. And he was fouled going in. Looks like Cole Vanderhey got his first foul. And Leotard, Leotard will go to the line. Shoot two. And now at the two-minute mark, that clock will stop if we're within 10. So to sew this up a little bit with some free throws will help because you're at, you're at eight. Very doable yet for the Frankfurt Panthers. And his second attempt is good. So down seven with two minutes left. Now it goes to a regular game clock setting. And it's just how good the defense of the Panthers can come around. 
Oh, oh. two kids just got tangled up. And official timeout. There was, there was nothing there that it was one thing or the other, but they just got tangled Looked up. Looked like he kind of got a knee in the head or a, well, or a he, foot in the their, head. Their, foot, their two feet got tangled up. One was running through and one was going to cut up to play defense, and it just was a bad timing thing. And I think uh, Ryland Lewis kind of got the brunt of it. He ended up on the floor, and the, the other kid stumbled, but he didn't hit the floor. So it's sad. We're hoping that you know it's not a bad thing. That, you Into know, the he's, game. He's injured. Yeah. Into the game for Scott Phil will be number 30, 38, Zach Graham. And into the game for Frankfurt, 40, I believe, is number 41, yep. Colton Bates. And 56, I think, checked in for the uh, Scottville Spartans, Brody Clems. One minute, 48 seconds left. Scott Phil's in no hurry. That's oh, those picks we've been five. talking about, you know, and it's, it's, it's a great learning tool. But now with the clock stopping, Scottville can kind of give some help instead of having it run when it's out of bounds. And that's Cash Rolsum. There's a rebound by a young man that just came in. 41, Colton Bates. Stepped on the, stepped on the line. Ah, that's what happened over there. Tom, look, he's darn near picking it up and carrying it when he's dribbling the ball. But <laughs> tough pass. Nicely broken up, though, by Colton Bates. They just need to get on the offensive side here to hit some shots. Again, Vanderhaeg on that front court. Handling most of the ball handling duties right now. 56 who just got in. Again, that was Brady Clems. He, Brody Clems, sorry. He got a nice basket. And Cash rolls him. Read nice pass underneath. I'm a little surprised Scott Phil's even shooting the ball. Yeah, the, the time and score didn't come into effect, but, you know, they're kids. I guess, you know, the, the coach could pull a time and score, but... Uh, <laughs> I think now we're going to see... Uh, A little bit more pace out of, oh, there's that move. He just ball handling. Franker really has to go out and get it. Oh, there's that illegal screen again, put on by number 38, Zach Graham. I believe that's his fourth. That is his fourth. Into the game for Scott Bell, Zach Molina. 38.8 seconds left in the contest. It'll be difficult for Frankfurt to. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Cash rolls them all the way up from one side of the floor and back, and it's only a five-point game, 20 to 15. But that Vanderhag, young young Vanderhag's a very patient kid. He knows the game. He just gets it over. Drew the foul on Cash rolls them, and not a, not enough to shoot at this point. Well, I'm sure the Frank. I'm sure the Scottville. Uh, defense was told not to foul, so that's probably why they had uh, such an open path to the basket. Well, he got by him. It's a little bit too late. And Tom, like you said, they're still shooting. There's a big rebound by a young man that checked in. Bennett's, Caleb Bennett. Three-pointer by number 38, Zach Graham. Zach that's Graham hits a long Two, two three-pointers in the game for that young man. Well, our, our final stanza score is 23-15, and uh, Coach Lewis is coming back, so that's good. And you know, shake hands with the other team. You want to see that? Um, you know, congratulate his kids also. And uh, Frankfurt will be the runner-up with a nice trophy and medal presentation. And then also, uh, Spartans will be handed a, a little bigger trophy and one for the trophy case also. As both schools will get one for the trophy case. And Ryan Kieschkowski and one of his sons, along with Zach Bialik and Nick Fortier, representing one of the sponsors, Smith and Eddie. Uh, coming out to uh, present the trophy. I should say trophies and medals. Um, hopefully uh, our main cameraman and only cameraman, Barry Lynn, can pick up the house announcers so we can uh, hear the kids' names as they're hauled off.
We always acknowledge each team that's left the contest, you know, with a nice hands or staying ovation for those kids that worked so hard and played fair. I know uh, talking with Ryan um, earlier today before anybody showed up, we're, uh, we're looking at putting uh, a five-member team together from all, this, all the schools that play. And what we're looking at is not the most scoring individual, uh, we're trying to promote this sportsmanship, you know, at all levels. We're looking at putting something together for medals for the five sportsmen, best sportsmen on each team. small engraving panels on that when we purchased it and we we want to keep this thing going for years to come i don't know how many years i'll be involved with it i'm sure as more boys or dads get involved with the boys and uh as coaches come through i'm hoping that you know i can just stick with my girls stuff but to get this up and running was a big thing for me personally well sometimes it takes someone with some experience to get her started and hopefully you can get somebody to <laughs> yeah this year marks uh, for you a little bit <laughs> yeah this year uh with our our uh, basketball camp that we've had teams come in and visit from all over the state during the summers for the girls varsities this is the 20th year marks the 20th year and we're we're trying to come up with an idea to have a nice uh 20 year shirt that the girls all get um that that again we'll start working on that here uh probably two weeks okay. and that gets us ready for the end of july or middle of july is when we usually run that camp but what a hands off to the spartans of scottville and also the panthers of frankfurt 
both getting to this point and congratulating those both those teams and all the teams for participating and helping out this year. I guess before we wrap up, maybe I can give some final statistics on scoring. Uh, first for the Scottville, uh, Scottville team, the Spartans. Um, Leading the team in scoring with two three-pointers was uh, Zach Graham with six points, followed by Kyle Peters, who had uh, two field goals and a extra and a uh, not an extra point, a <laughs> free throw for five points. Um, and then we had Graydon Etchinson, Zach Molina, Nate Wild, and Caden Rummer, all with two points. Frankfurt Panthers were led in scoring by Eli Lighthurt, who had seven points followed by Ryan Rylan Lewis with four points. And uh, Cash Rosam and Aiden Evans had two points apiece. Stage. Tom, yeah, just a great job. We had fun today, and here comes Zach up if he wants to say something about what he did and how he talked his uh, employer into uh, helping us out. And, you know, Zach was the first one that stepped forward out of all the official, excuse me, out of all the sponsors. And... He kind of got the ball rolling for me thinking about even uh, going to someone and asking for sponsorship money or the thing. I usually don't. My girls' camps, I've never done that. This year I might because of the 20th year. But, uh, Zach, can't thank you enough. And, you, you know, you started it. I know. Um, well, it goes back to we were talking to you guys down there. Uh, I think uh, 2007 or 8 uh, was the first year that uh, uh, I played in it, and it was uh, something that we looked forward to every year. Um, so just to see the kids and, and to be a part of something like this, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, really look forward to being here. And, and I know it, it touched you because you, you know, you went to school here and you had the opportunity to play in it and, you know, to have you come up forward and, you know, even Mr. Sang, he was here, uh, Josh from Chop was Sagala. He was a, he was a Trinity Lutheran kid, but also played in a co-op here in junior high. I, I actually got to coach with him, uh, Paul Swarovski, Swarovski's brothers, he was also a coach here with uh, with me for several several years, and of course, Dave from Big Al's. Uh, he's uh, everybody knows Big Al's, and they were a big part of helping us get this going. And all the other, you know, we had some other supporters too. Um, again, we could finish up with Boyer Agency, Sports Inc., Lucky Lizard, and the Jake Sacconi Memorial Golf Tournament, and Stu's Pub, John Horkel, and and Jason Coopshaw down there. And just nobody said no out of the ones I approached. And, you know, we got some nice input. And uh, just a great, great weekend for these kids. No, I think, uh, I think you hit right on the head there, Todd. I think uh, uh, to see the excitement, you know, down here on the kid's face, uh, that's uh, what it's all about. And, uh, you know, I know it's, uh, you know, you've seen the individual pictures right now, you know, something that uh, uh, we never forgot uh, uh, being involved in it. So. Uh, I think it's uh, something I hope we can keep going. Well, again, thanks for coming up and saying a few words. And, Barry, again, thank you for all your time and efforts being here. And for us here at what used to be Channel 2, uh, don't know quite sure what channel we'll call it now, but <laughs> we're off the air and hopefully we can do this again and hopefully Barry can uh, get a tape for each one of these schools so we can hand it to them of such a game of this you know, magnitude for those kids and the coach can have a pizza party with them and you know, show, some, show some enjoyment with the kids. Right. Thanks, Todd. Thank you, guys.